Hello, it's Bot Chief Editor. Today, I will talk about actions in file operation and email operation. The first action, image resize. It can change the format and the size of the local image. View its action settings. Click variable management. I can manage the variables. Here I choose the path of the local image. I select this image in disk F format JPG. I can save the path to variable so I can use variable. Here to select a folder to save the new image. I still choose disk F. Input the name of the new image. Here to select the file type of new image. Its original format is JPG. But here I can save it to be an image in PNG format. The height and width of new image. This is the original size. Now I modify the size. Here to choose a string type variable to save the path of the new image. Save the settings. Now test the run the action successfully. Here in variable viewer, I can see the path of the new image. View the two images respectively. This is the original image. This is the new image. That's all for the first action, image resize. The second action, write file. View its action settings. Here to select the type of file, txt file for example. How to write a content, overwrite, append, or wrap and append. Here to input the text that I want to write in the file. I can also use text in variable if I want to save the text in the variable. If I use a table type variable, I need to add separator between the columns. Here I manually input a text. Here to select the path for the file. If the file does not exist in this path, it will automatically create a file if the file does exist, the operations above will be executed. I create a new file. I can also use path in variable if I want to save the path to the variable. Save the settings and test run the action. View the file. Well, that's all for write file action. Next action, read file. Switch to its action settings. To select the type of file. How to read content. Read all content of the file and save it into a string variable. Or read all lines of the file and save it into a table variable. Here to select the local file to read. Here I select a variable to save the content that it reads. Save the settings and test run the action. 
read successfully. If it reads all lines of the file and save it into a table variable, I need to select a table variable and select the column. And select how to save the file. For better testing, I select another file. This is the content of this file. Save settings and run the action. It reads the file successfully. Next action, file process. It can process the file. The processing way. Here to input the path of the file, including the suffix name of the file. Here to save the result to a string type variable. If the operations are executed successfully, it will return true. If the operations fail to be executed, it will return false. I select to remove a file. There will be no return value. Now I copy the path and select the image. Input the path here. Remember its suffix name. Save the settings and test run the action. It deleted the picture successfully. If the processing way is moved, I need to select the destination path. If I select copy, I need to select the destination path. If there is a file with the same name, I can choose to overwrite it or not. Next action, directory process. It processes the directory. It can get all files under the specified path and save the path to a table type variable. Processing way create, move, copy and remove. Almost the same settings as the file processing settings in file process action. So I skip them. For processing way get file list. It is going to get all files under the specified path and save the path to a table type variable. Here to select the column. For example, I'm going to get all files under disk F. Save the settings and test run this action. These are all the files under disk F, including the path, the name of the file, and the suffix name. For get file list, it gets name and path of the file under the specified path. Save the settings and test run it. Here are the names and path it got. The next action. Select files. It can pop up the dialog box of the selected files. Here is the dialog title. Here to set the types of files that will show. Now it will show all types of files. If I want txt file only, I input the type of txt file. Here I can multiple select the file. I will save the path of the selected files to a table type variable. So if I multiple select files, the path of the files will be saved here like this. I save it to the second column. 
the initial directory, I select disk F. And to show its all txt files, save the settings and test run the action. Now only txt files displayed here. This is the dialog title I set just now. I can select one or more files and open the files. Already saved to the second column. That's all for the actions in file operation. Next, I will talk about actions in email operation. The first action in it, send email. It can send emails automatically. View its action settings. I can input the receiver's email address in the three input box sent to BCC and CC. The subject and body of the email. Here I can use email address in variables if I want saved to. Here to input your email address and password. The server of your email box. Port is the SMTP of your email box. That is Simple Message Transfer Protocol. Different mailboxes have different servers and ports. They both depend on the sender's mailbox. You can look up servers and ports on the internet easily. Whether to use SSL, the value must be yes or no. Default is yes. And yes is recommended. Next, I will give you an example. The receiver's mail address. The email subject. The email body. The sender's email, the password, the server of Gmail box, its SMTP is 587 or 465. Save settings and test run the action. Email sent successfully. Now check my email box. The email has been sent successfully. Next action, receive emails. It can scrape the needed email content. In the action settings, I can set the content that the email title contains or doesn't contain. Email amount, that is the number of emails that the program will scrape from. From all emails or part of emails. 10 for example. It will randomly select 10 mails out of all and scrape from the 10 emails. Here to save the scraped content to string type variables. Your email address and password. The server address for sending email is different from server address for receiving email. Just as I mentioned, Gmail server address is this. There are two Gmail server addresses for receiving email. The first one is this. I need to change as into I. If you are not clear about it, but you do need it, you can look it up on the internet. Port is also different. There are two kinds of access protocols, IMAP and POP3. So if the protocol is different, 
the server and port will be different. That is receive emails action. Next action, get confirm link. It can get needed links from the inbox. View its action settings. To scrape the links from all emails or from the unread emails. Here, the number of the emails to scrape. It can get needed links through following settings. Through date, content that the subject contains or not. And content that the needed link contains or not. Which link to save? I just need to input the index of the link. And the index starts with 1. This is the time it needs to wait after checking one email. And then starts the next one. This is the timeout in second for the entire action. And then save the link corresponding to the index to a string type variable. I still need to input my email and password. And also server and port based on protocol. That's all for this video. Thank you.